Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, and today's video is going to concentrate on taking a look at the final drive on the GL1000 uh, Goldwing restoration. Um, I haven't done one of these before, so I'm not quite sure what to expect, but we'll see how we go. Um, uh, obviously this is pretty filthy, so I think our first job is to, um, before we t do anything else at all, get this in the parts washer, um, get all of this washed off uh, so we can actually see what we've got. So we'll do that first and um, then we'll come back when we've got it a bit cleaner. Right, that's slightly better than it was before. It's not perfect, but um, so this is the original um, alloy. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but obviously this was paint that was put on afterwards, which is um, pretty much worn off on a lot of this. <clears throat> so um, we'll be repainting this. Um, so I think the first thing we need to do is actually see if there's any oil in this. I don't know whether there is or not, to be perfectly honest, because... Um, this bike was only loosely assembled, as as you probably know. So um, uh, this is the fill screw for the um, the gear oil, and this is the drain screw. So we're going to take those out first, um, and then tip it upside down into a container. See if we've actually got anything in there. Standard Honda cap used on no end of um, different Hondas, including uh, for tappet covers and all sorts of things. So let's just go top wet, keep everything together. It's got the O ring on, so that's good. Uh, I can see something in there, I think. Uh, maybe not. Mm, possibly not. Okay, let's undo the. Um, the drain screw as well. Okay, that's interesting. We've got a, a steel washer and then a fiber washer. Don't know whether that's correct. We'll check that in a minute and we'll put it back together. Um, Let's grab a container and we'll tip this upside down to see if, uh, if anything comes out. I've got a it's not going to. Nope, absolutely nothing coming out of there at all. So, to be fair, uh, can see in there it looks a bit milky actually now taking a second look so I think I want to get this off really um, if nothing else just so I can get it polished up before I put it back on so um, let's see if we never go getting that off I could I've tried with the um, <clears throat> with the T wrench but um, they do seem quite tight so try with the other dugger easy with that so we've got three allen bolts and 
three washers. Those will all get zinc plated before they go back together. Turn this and this just lifts off now. There we go. Okay. So that's just lifted off. And it looks to me like there's a sealing O-ring um, sat in there which I think I'm going to take off and put on this so I know where it is. It's also a load of grease put around it at some point to hold it in place, sure. I think. Okay, it's a rubber washer, which is just taking the form of that. <clears throat> that, uh, yeah, that's that's basically just sat in there. I don't think it was meant to be uh, an O-ring as such. Right, so that's good. So that's off, that's... All looks okay. <clears throat> so now if we turn this over, um, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bolts which hold on this what they call a retaining ring cover. Um, so they look like the next thing to come off. Um, Interestingly, there's a what looks like a, a marker or an arrow here. I don't know if that's just to hold that from turning. I'm not quite sure what that's what that's for. The book doesn't really mention that. But um, anyway, we need to get these undone, um, and then hopefully we can lift this away, and then we can see what we've got inside. I'm going to assume that all these are the same. No washes as such on these, but they have got shoulders on them. Looks to be a paper or a, a material gasket underneath this as well, which would make sense because it's holding the oil in. And then we've got this last one with this. Um, I'm going to call it an arrow, a pointer um, on there, which just sits inside one of these rings. Um, just to hold it in place or, or what that's for. But I guess it needs to go back on the same one. So um, is that shown on the diagram? Yes, it is. Although it's not very clear. So what does it actually call that piece? 32. A bearing retainer stop, it calls that. A bearing retainer stop. Okay, well, um, I probably won't remember which one it goes back on when I put it back together, but I can certainly refer back to this video. So, one of the advantages of doing videos. Well, of course, I can take some pictures. Right. So, bearing retainer stop, apparently that is. So, that's that off. Um, and then I would imagine that this should now lift off, although I'm no doubt it's going to be stuck. One thing I should have mentioned before uh, I started taking this apart is when I first took it off the bike, I thought it was um, it felt okay when I was just turning it by hand. But um, I've since discovered that actually when I turn this, I don't know if you heard that, I keep going. So which way up is this? Um, Yeah, so this is the top, if you like. Um, so the bike would, yeah, normally go in that way round, and there's definitely some clunks, and sometimes I'd be turning it like that. Yeah, there you go, and it's just stopped, and it's got really hard to turn. So um, I'm obviously worried that there's something not right inside this, and it needs further investigation. So um, we've taken the screws out, and that says use two screwdrivers to um, lever this plate off. Um, I really don't like using screwdrivers for this sort of thing, but let's have a go. Okay. Oh. I was expecting just just this plate to come off and leave that behind, so maybe we'll have to take the whole thing out then. Okay, what have we got here? Okay. 
Right, so that's the inside of our final drive. You're seeing this at the same time as I am. Um, okay, there's a shim on there. And I think, I can't remember if that's the important shim or that's just a thrust washer. Um, we'll come on to that later, but that obviously goes onto, onto there. So very initial inspection of this, which I'm going to clean all this up and check it properly. But I can't see anything broken off any of these teeth. And they don't look particularly worn. There is a way, when we put this back together, um, to, to set this up properly. Um, and I'll go into that in more detail when we come to put it back together. But I need some... I think either engineering blue or something like that to be able to do that. Um, so we'll look at that at a later stage. But I do think this gear, well, it does come out of this casing. So let's just, just knock that on there. Apologies if it's knocking the camera. Is that coming out? Yeah. Okay, so there's our washer that's just fell off. Okay, so this will require closer inspection, and I'm sure there are measurements in the book so we can check all these dimensions, etc. Um, so we'll take a closer look at that another time. But for now, I'm going to go and clean these bits and pieces up. Um, I'm running out of time today to do some of these things. So, um, I haven't found anything wrong with that part of it. So the other part of that gearing is in here. Uh, hopefully you can see that. And all oh right, okay, that is yeah, that's definitely stiff. And there's roller bearings. There's a roller bearing or caged bearing in there by the looks of it. So I think perhaps that needs sorting out that's, yeah it's really stiff actually okay now we've got another roller caged bearing here on the face of it that one seems very free and then we've got this one in here Whoa. Okay, that one is not good. Just, yeah, look, that's locked up now. That's literally locked up. Yeah, that's locking enough as I'm... Uh, I can feel that, so that's really quite notchy. And every now and then it just stops completely and locks up. So that's not good. Right, my main concern with this, I think, is that um, the I need to look at this more closely, but the book suggests that if you've got problems with these um, these bearings, and it's locked up again now, um, they suggest you take it to your Honda dealer to get sorted out. Well, I can't imagine a Honda dealer is going to want to look at a you know a bike this old these days to be honest um, so maybe this is going to be a job for an engineering shop um, I'll do a bit of research online I'll find out whether people have done these themselves might be a question of heating it up there's a seal in there to get the seal out perhaps we can knock that out um, that one probably won't be too bad to get out that one seems okay but if we're changing that one I suppose we ought to do that one as well uh, that one I think is going to need to be pulled out that's going to be a lot harder to do and the one that you probably can't see it looks like a different sort of bearing right down in there um, that's really quite bad and stiff so I don't like that at all um, so I need to work out how to get this assembly out and, and take a closer look at that um, so just a little bit more information on this um, this is a preload shim and basically you can get different sizes of these 
And the idea is, of this is that um, what it does is it spaces these teeth away from these um, teeth and um, preloads the gearing um, for a smoother riding to make sure that these don't get damaged. Um, and the way of making sure that this is the correct size of shim is described in the manual and basically you put engineers blue or I can't remember, there's another word for it um, on these teeth and you turn the whole thing put it assemble it turn it all back and forth open it up and then depending on where the um, blue is transferred to the other teeth you know whether the correct size shim is installed or whether you need to put a thicker one to space the gears out a bit or a thinner one so they move in a bit towards the and mesh more um, but as I say we'll, we'll worry about that when we when we come to reassembly but for the time being that's what that is don't lose that that's really important um, it's not just a washer um, that is a, um, a shim that's specially sized to preload these these gears so moving things on a bit um, things perhaps aren't quite as bad as they seemed initially now I've managed to get this apart and um, I've been able to clean it up properly um, this bearing in here which is the ring cover is now now I've, I've had it in the parts washer well, I don't know 10-15 minutes um, cleaned it out with an airline uh, put some light machine oil on it and that's running absolutely fine um, and that was really sticky before um, and locking up but that is now absolutely spot on so um, there's no play in it up, up and down side to side nothing nothing looks worn can't see anything broken or chipped so I'm more than happy with that doesn't seem to be any damage to anything else apart from the gasket um, so yeah I'm happy with that um, putting that to one side and then looking at the ring gear itself um, again there's um, no signs of any kind of chipping damage major wear um, uh, to to the this ring gear teeth um, at all um, they look absolutely fine to me um, don't know if you can see that but there's a like some etching on there 28 as a stamped 13 and then there's a hand um, scribed 20 uh, 28 on there 28 13 don't quite know what that that stands for but um, if you know let me know in the comments um, this surface which is the surface that sits into the bearing in the outer case uh, you can see signs of wear but um, it's, it's not been spinning on that and the same on this one as well which is the one that goes into that that bearing um, again doesn't look particularly worn it doesn't look like this is seized up and it's been spinning on there so that's good um, these splines here do look a little worn um, possible signs of wear on those but nothing major certainly nothing um, like you would expect if they were badly worn so according to the book I think they're going to be fine as well so that's all good however um, well let's move on to the outer casing um, this ball race in here um, was all stiff and uh, no it wasn't this one was okay actually wasn't it um, and I've cleaned that one up anyway and that seems to be running absolutely fine so I'm happy with that one um, however this one down in there uh, you can see that right down in there um, I'm not quite so happy with when I turn this it's got a bit of a noise and it's still a bit graunchy and I've again I've cleaned it out in the parts washer I've put a bit of light oil on it and, uh, it just doesn't seem quite right to me that one uh, it's an entirely different kind of um, bearing uh, in there so I believe we can get um, this assembly, this whole assembly here out and I think what we have to do is to 
this nut on the end has um where's my spanner where's my right has got um an indent there where it's been hammered or center punched over same on the other side so we've got to lever those up then we can clamp this in the soft jaw vice get the nut off get this off as a washer first then this and then I think we can tap the whole of this and this out this way. So I think that's what we need to try and do okay, next. So I'm just going to try and tap that. So this, this nut has a collar and the collar gets bent over to stop this nut coming undone. We just need to push that back up enough so that we can try and do this nut a bit careful because obviously that's they're the threads of the of the spline underneath so we don't want to damage those okay well, this is how the manual describes let's get this off let's see how we go okay Okay, one nut, one washer, which I'll be able to get out when I've got this out of the vise. Um, okay, so we've got the nut and the washer off, so it now suggests uh, tapping this with a um, hammer. Well, it actually says a, use a um, plastic or lead hammer to force the pin out of its bearing. Uh, I suppose, yeah, but we'll try this one. This is plastic. Well, it's well used, but it's not going to damage the thread anyway, that's the main point. So I think the idea now is that as we bash this, I'm sorry, carefully apply some uh, pressure to that. The whole thing, that should come away from this, which should knock this into there, and we should be able to remove the whole thing. Let's see how we go. Make some room. Okay, there it goes. What have we got? Right, we've got yet more splines inside there. That stinks, that grease in there. Oh, that absolutely reeks. That's horrible. Oof. I'm just going to have to go through the parts washer. So that's that part. That's definitely falling out. Let's turn it over, see what we've got. Okay. Right, so that's the assembly we're looking at. And this is the... Oh, there's a big washer on there as well. This is all um, detailed in the... Well, I'm looking at the climbing manual at the moment as to which well this goes back together in which order so that's not too worried about that um it's grease and oil in here it does absolutely stink uh now we need to be careful there because there is a no a rubber o-ring on that which i'm just going to have a quick look in the book to make sure it mentions that so i don't forget on reassembly yep number 23 yeah it's the o-ring okay so my main concern with this is this um because, you know, I don't really know enough about bearings as to whether it's meant to be wobbling around like that. Um, it doesn't look like it's got excessively hot. There's no bluing on it. There's no obvious signs of wear on the rollers themselves. So that looks, looks good. The cage looks to be in good condition. So, mm, to my mind, that looks okay. But obviously, when it was sat on that race in there, it did seem to be causing an issue. But 
that's rotating perfectly freely so I don't see there was any issue with that and if we look in here the race itself you perhaps probably can't see in there that well but that's just the standard race which shows absolutely no signs of any marks or wear at all so I'm slightly confused oh hang on there's another oh right okay right with there is another bearing here underneath this seal which I didn't spot and that one looks very loose uh, well, that's just flopping around in there I'm pretty sure that's not right I don't know though hmm okay I think I perhaps need to get that seal out next and uh, and I will look at that one but that one does seem to be very very loose in there but having said that it's not causing any problems with turning it doesn't feel like it's stuck or anything right a bit more investigation required uh, right so there's a seal in here um, and there's a bearing caged roller bearing behind that which as you can see is very loose and wobbly in there and when I turn it it feels quite notchy and I can see from the other side it's there's a lot of um, lateral float in that you can see it moves from side to side a lot um, I don't know whether that's right or not maybe it's self-centering when the shaft goes through I don't know um, I need to do a bit more research on this I also need to find out uh, I mean obviously all the rest of the bearings now seem to be okay but I'm still wondering whether I might have better getting these out myself and changing the bearings and the seals or possibly um, just taking these along to a, a machine shop and getting them to work out which bearings are required uh, and just doing them for me I haven't got a press to get these back in some bearings you don't need a press for um, for instance this you could put the bearing in the freezer overnight heat this up just before you drop it in then sometimes these things will literally just drop in you leave them um, you know and that's it job done um, that one because it's got the rubber seal around there probably wouldn't be too hard to get in and out um, oil seal I should say this one has got an oil seal behind it so I'd have to get that one out to get to the oil seal because I can't get to it from that side um, I don't really think I've got anything that I can get in here to pull that one out and I can't get it out from that side so that might be a machine shop job and I'm looking at the one in there and I'm thinking the same thing um, so let me go and have a look for a start see if um, you can in fact get any kind of um, uh, repair kit or um, refurb kit for these um, final drives or um, whether I'm onto a hide, a hide into nothing and um, I nearly take it somewhere to be, be done so uh, I think I'll do us for today um, thanks for watching I um, hope you've enjoyed the video if you have please give it a thumbs up subscribe down below and I will see you in the next video